All right, guys. God bless you guys, and welcome to This Is It, 4, 3, 2, 1, Before the Fire, guys. Here we go. Let's go. All right. There's a couple of things I want to talk to you guys about. First thing is, if you're looking at the news and you're paying attention to the world, geopol geopolitical realities, um, World War III is here. Every, everybody should already know it's here. It's obvious it's here. Um, but what I want to talk to you about, if you, if you follow this ministry, if you've been following me at all, I want you to be secure in your salvation. Uh, I have recently, in the past 24 hours, had some very uh, intense heart-to-heart -heart talks with people that are close to me, you know, people that are believers, people that know the truth. Ready? The truth. When you know the truth and you've been converted, the enemy's always going to try and put doubt in your mind, try and sow a seed of disbelief. If you feel like you've done something you shouldn't have done, the enemy's going to use that to try and sow doubt. But I want y'all to understand that your salvation is, is secure and a lot of people have this idea that they haven't done enough or they haven't performed well enough or maybe they slipped up and they did something they said they weren't going to do um i'm here first today to help you understand your salvation and the security of your salvation before i do my next video which is coming today um the lord put it on me in a supernatural way that I needed to show you guys this morning um, the way these events rolled out in a in a personal way to me to warn y'all, okay? But let's talk about your salvation first. How many people since they've been saved, since you were converted, have, have ever felt like you you could have done something that would make God not want you anymore? Okay, I'm a harbinger. I mean, I'm the guy the Lord showed the, the riddle of ages, the mystery. The big shh, don't let everybody know thing. That you're in a cannibalistic vampiric system. And you have your own evil doppelganger that's attached to the pit that is feeding off you your whole life. It's the worm in the pit, the worm that never dies. Everybody's got one. Until you're converted, then the worm dies. Then you no longer have a Bluetooth line to the pit, to a worm that's feeding off you everywhere you go from the pit. Because when you're converted, you're converted. Okay, a lot of people, oh, you can lose your salvation. That is true, you could. But you would have to make an open display of crucifying Christ again. And it would be a really, have to be a really serious, open acknowledgement of rejecting Christ and the Holy Spirit. And it would be, uh, it wouldn't be because you went and drank or you, you cheated on your wife or something. Well, David cheated on his wives. How many, how many wives did David have? <laughs> Who's counting, right? 300 plus. I don't know. There's either 700 concub concubines 300 wives, whatever. There's a lot of girls. So when David cheated on basically a thousand girls with Bathsheba, who was married, <laughs> I mean, you know, then he's like, oh, I got her pregnant. I better have Uriah killed and I better lie to an entire nation. I mean, <laughs> you know, well, did God throw David in the dumpster? Is David in hell? No. He admitted what he did. He said, I, I did this. When Nathan showed up and told him the little story, I'm not going to go through the whole story. Y'all should know it already. Anyway, so Nathan said, you're the guy, man. And David said, I'm the guy. And he admitted it. And he said, blessed be the name of the Lord. And so it's about your willingness to admit what you've done. That's what this all boils down to. I want, before you finish this video, I want you to understand this is what the Lord's shown me. I'm going to show it to you. Because the next video I do is going to be what happened today and the way the Lord showed me this very supernatural reality that's about to happen. And he wants everybody to be at peace. He doesn't want y'all to be like a couple friends of mine that are like almost in a panic 
like all of a sudden, oh me, I me, I've lost my salvation. It's like, what? Everybody needs to quit thinking that you're in charge of your inheritance because you're not. Okay, so I'm going to give you a couple examples and then I'm going to use the scriptures, the word of God. So if the word of God is going to be delivered to you right now and you want to argue with the word of God, then you do have a problem. But if you believe in Jesus Christ and you've been converted, I always do this because that's what converted is. Your eyes were not single. You had one eye from heaven, one eye to the pit. And when you get converted, your eyes become single. The one that's upside down gets inverted and you can see the world as it truly is. It's that simple. That's why the virgin, when you turn it the opposite direction, is a dead sheep. Did you see the words opposite direction in the yes last video uh, video yesterday? Did you see it? Okay. Where our God is from the other side. The God of this world is attached to the pit. Our God is from heaven. Their God's from the pit. Do you understand? The host body is owned by their God. The flesh is owned by the pit. The flesh is in, is in opposition to the spirit of the living God. So you got to be born again, spiritually reborn, in order to get back to where you came from. I'm going to prove that to you, that you're going to get back there again. Again. I know people are you ready. Okay, now let me give you a couple examples. So I want you to have some concrete examples. Okay, so. If when you get converted, if you have a line that goes to heaven, the, the, the source of your consciousness, the angel part of your consciousness comes from heaven. That's a dimensional trough that's your eye. The other eye goes to the pit, which is a dimensional trough to the pit where you have your own worm. I've, I've shown you over and over again in the scriptures where the worm never dies. I'm against you women who hunt the souls of men to make your pillows fly. It's I'll give I'll restore to you the years the canker worm is eaten. Because there's a race of beans, it's called the serpent race, and they're hunting God's angels throughout the host body system. Okay, now watch. If you get if this is your condition, there's a line of energy that goes up and one that goes down, and you get converted. That means both your eyes become single, you look up, you accept the God of heaven. The God of heaven is El, the almighty God. He came into the system in the flesh and the likeness of sinful flesh as Emmanuel. With us is El. Imanu is with us is and then El, the almighty God. So El, the almighty God comes into the system. Emmanuel, and they call him Jesus, the self-existing eternal Jehovah Elohim. He dies on a cross for your sins. You look up and say, I'm guilty. I've sinned against heaven. You would be just in condemning me. Forgive me. He converts you. Both your eyes become single. All of a sudden, you turn the world upside down. You can see the other half of the equation. You realize this is the most demonic place you've ever seen because you never looked at it the way it really is. Okay. So once you get converted, your inheritance in heaven is kept for you. By you or by God. Who holds on to your inheritance for you? Well, when you get converted, it's kept in heaven for you by God. So if I have a big vault right now, and whoever you are watching this video, and I'm like, you know what? You got converted. Praise God. Now walk it out in faith. And you know what? Your inheritance is going to be kept. I'm going to put it in this vault right here. We're going to put your inheritance, your eternal life in this vault, and it's going to be kept for you. How are you going to lose what's in that vault? <laughs> it's not you that's in charge of what's in the vault. But you're walking around on the, you know, on the earth. You're walking around and, you know, you're having good days. You're having bad days. Sometimes you do the best you can do and it, you're still like, that sucked. What did Paul say? Oh, what a wretched man am I. The very things I wish not to do, I find myself doing. And the very things I wish to do, I cannot. Who will save me from this body of death? Does that sound like you? <laughs> it's like, yes. Okay, well, why do you think Jesus watched his disciples' feet? Did you know even after you're born again, just walking around on this place, you're going to get dirty. And so at the end of the day, he cleanses you from all unrighteousness. But if you do something like you did something like, let's say you committed adultery, 
you have to come clean. You have to. If you've been doing something that you know is wrong, then just come clean. Just say it. Go say it to the person. Purge yourself of that sin. Go admit it. Just go do it. Purge yourself. I'm sorry. How many times do you forgive someone that sinned against you? Well, seven times, Peter said, being all cool. How about seven times seven? <laughs> Whatever. Seven times 70. So I'm sorry, seven times 70. It's like, if you do something and you ask your father for forgiveness, he forgives you. And now you have an advocate between you and the father, which is Jesus. The pit no longer has you. Now, let me give you some examples. Your inheritance is being kept for you in a vault in heaven where it can't be taken. It can't be defiled. It can't be corrupted. It's kept there for you while you're walking around on this thing called the earth. And you just walk your life out in faith trusting the person, Christ, who was the Lord God in the flesh, you have to put your trust in what he's doing for you, not what you're doing. What you're doing doesn't matter. People think, oh, I haven't done enough. Ready? Do you know what makes Christianity different than every other religion? Do y'all even know what makes it different? Christianity is the religion of divine accomplishment. I'll say it again. Christianity, believing in the Lord God, you believe, he shows you the truth, and you're like, I believed, oh my God, I got inverted, I was converted, I can see the truth everywhere, because he converted you by coming in the flesh, dying on a cross in the likeness of sinful flesh, so you could turn back to him and be purged of all your sins. Did you do anything for that? No. No. He did it all. It's the religion of divine accomplishment. He does everything. You just receive it like a little kid receives a, a candy bar from his dad. Hey, I love you, son. Thank you. Everybody, all these churches try to make it so hard. It's insane. It's the most simple thing in the world. He shows you the truth, and you're like, oh, praise God, thank you. I can see, wow, there's two halves of the equation. There's good and there's evil. Oh, my God, I'm the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. What do you think knowledge is? You know good and you know evil. Where does the knowledge of good come from? Heaven, where's the knowledge of evil come from? The pet. And guess what's in between? The tree. You're it. Do you get it? Okay, now let me show you. Your inheritance is being kept in a vault because I'm going to give you an example. Ready? You see the two arrows going up? Up. So I didn't write the best up right there, but two arrows going up, up. Two arrows going up, up. Now, the night I got saved, it was one of the weirdest testimonies in the world, probably, but the Lord told me, Jonathan, read the tags and the clothes you're carrying. And I looked at my girlfriend. I said, some source is communicating with me. He's telling me to read the tags and these clothes I'm carrying. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's God. And I threw the clothes down. I read the first tag. It said 100% nylon. Doesn't make any sense. Okay, I'm going to take these two things and I'm going to... Now watch. Okay, you see that magnetic force that wants to pull them together? Watch. It wants to pull them together. But if I turn one upside down like this, there's a force that doesn't want to let those things go together. So now we have one that's right side up, one that's upside down, the one that's black, that's upside down. So you have two arrows facing opposite directions. So when the Lord told me to read those tags and it said 100% nylon, I said it doesn't make any sense. And then the Lord said, turn it upside down. So the word nylon, turn it upside down. 100% nylon and then 100%, take the word nylon, turn it upside down and it becomes no lion 100 no lion both my eyes became single i was like well okay 100 no lion the total truth and then if you've seen my testimony the lord led me out to the back of the hotel and i had to make a decision where if i opened the door to the back of the hotel the alarm would go off and the people that i'd been in a high speed chase with that day were parked at the end of the hotel and more than likely they'd kill me in that alley so i was willing to die to know the truth Okay, my, my, my testimonies, I've been on YouTube for a long time. Go collectfiles.com if you don't believe this. It's all documented. It's, it's not arguable. So, when my eyes became single, when I prayed, Our Father, 
to the heavens and water and light came down on me and I was anointed, I became a harbinger right then and there. Now, is someone going to steal this from me? Is someone going to be able to pull these magnets apart? You know, the Bible says those who are born of God cannot sin. You know why they cannot sin is because that connection to the pit, ready? When I turn them upside down, the connection that goes to the pit, the one that's pointing down, that energy, ready? Okay, now ready? That energy is no longer effective. There's no line anymore because the other one grabbed it, flipped it, and made it whole. Okay, just think of it in an energy standpoint. So now to get you, you got to get those things apart. <laughs> it's like stupid. It's like, okay. But see, Satan doesn't want you to enjoy your peace. Satan wants to steal your peace. So if you go and you do something that you're like, oh, I shouldn't have done that, then Satan's like, oh, he's the accuser. He's going to come in and start accusing you. You're not going to have any peace till you just admit it. Just admit it. Admit it and say, I'm sorry. Let's keep going. Admit it and let's keep going. Keep doing your best no matter what. Now, you ready? Those who are born of God cannot sin and Satan can no longer attach himself to you. I did a whole video on it. But let me show you another scripture to help you guys because I'm going to do another video today and I'm going to show you guys. I think the moment is here. There's, there's too many things that are happening. Too many uh, Islamic countries are filing declarations of war against Israel. Y'all know what the Bible says. When Jerusalem is surrounded by vast armies, you know that the time of desolation has come. I'm bearing witness to the abomination that causes desolation. And that's that serpent seed from the pit making desolate the, the temple of God, which is the whole host body system, all flesh. All flesh is becoming desolate and will not house the spirit of God anymore. The abomination that causes desolation. And a lot of people are selling out. A lot, a lot of people are turning straight over evil now. Okay, now, y'all ready? Let me give you some scriptures. There's a lot going on right now. People are you know, VIP planes going to doomsday bunkers. Uh, there's a lot of um, Islamic countries that are declaring war, f formal declarations of war. I told you they raised that black flag. The black flag that they raised, it's in the Hadith about when you see that black flag go up, if you're Islamic all over the world, join in the fight. That means their Mahdi is here and it's time to take over. That's what it means showed it to you. I showed you videos of Biden saying he meets with his Islamic teacher once a week. Well, I know Jin Saki said Obama has lunch with him once a week. Is that his teacher? Well, we know that the Bidens are as corrupt as it gets, and we know that the Bidens' uh, corruption goes to the time he was vice president with Obama. There's 80,000 emails under pseudonyms. Can y'all not figure out that giving Iran a bunch of money and leaving $87 billion of equipment for Islam is not setting the stage for what's happening right now? You'd have to be deaf, dumb, and blind not to see what's going on. It's insane. It's like, okay, well, here you go. Here's $87 billion of equipment. Here's a bunch of cash. And the goal is to wipe out the Jews. The goal of Satan is to wipe out God's people on the earth. If you know what the whole goal is, then you can understand what's going on in the world. If you don't have a biblical worldview, you'll never understand what's going on. This is all biblical. Okay, now. Thanks for letting me vent. Now, here you go. You ready? Your salvation. You need to be at peace. It's like, it, okay, so you didn't feel like you did enough for the Lord. All right. Well, you know, there's a, well, uh, there's a rewards system for those of us that have labored for the Lord. It just doesn't, doesn't mean you're going to lose your salvation, though. Okay, now, ready? Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ. Now, I want to show you the word Jesus before we even start. I'm going to prove to you Jesus is the self-existent eternal Jehovah. 
mentioned in Genesis 2. The one that gives you the Holy Spirit. He's the, he's the half of the equation that's life. The other half of the equation that's death is Satan from the pit. So you have life and death in one body. That's it. And your host body dies. Unless you turn back and you get spiritually reborn into eternal life, well, then you don't get eternal life. You get eternal death. It's the most simple thing in the world. Okay, watch. Ready? Let's go to Jesus Christ. Ready? Jesus. So I'm going to ask you a couple questions. Okay, I'm sorry I'm laughing, guys, but I'm like, come on, guys. Ready? Does that say... Iesus, Iesus, right? That is the Greek pronunciation of Jesus, Iesus. In English, we say Jesus, but in Greek, you say Iesus. Okay, but it's of a Hebrew origin, the word Iesus. Now, if you see these lunatics go, oh, it's Zeus. They're lunatics. <laughs> it's like, okay, no, it's not Zeus. Okay, Jesus. That's the pronunciation of Jesus in Greek, right here. It's of a Hebrew origin, and it's Jesus that is. Say this word out loud, please. Say this word out loud. Say Yeho. Say Yeho, and then say Shua. Yeho, Shua. So Jesus is the Hebrew origin. From this word right here, 3091. Ready? So here's the origin of the word Yehoshua. Ready? 3068 plus 3467. 3068, that's the Yeho part. See the Yeho part? Okay, I'm going to click on that. The self existent eternal Jehovah. See it? Okay, now I'm going to go back. So Yeho is Jehovah, and the Shua part is to be open, to be safe, to set free, to preserve, to rescue, salvation. So the name Jesus is from Hebrew. Yeho Shua, the self-existing eternal Jehovah that opens wide. Here's how he opens the dungeon. He redoubles your eyes. It's the most obvious thing in the world. I've done so many videos on it. Luke 61, I mean, Luke chapter 4, uh, Isaiah 61. The dungeon, the opening of dungeons. The dungeon is your body. That's the dungeon. And he opens it wide by opening your eyes to where your eyes become single by showing you the other half of the equation. Why do you think the virgin's a dead sheep? <laughs> it's like, oh my God, 100% nylon. To 100% no lion. And you must speak the truth, do the truth, tell the truth. If you're, if you're holding on to lies, then that's what you should be afraid of. If you've been lying to someone, come clean now. Because we're at the door. We are at the door. And if you've come clean and you're not trying to cover anything up, you haven't told any lies, you haven't tried to set people up, you haven't tried to do evil to other people, and you're trying to cover it up, well, then you're in deep trouble. But if you just come clean before the Lord and admit what you've done, say, I'm sorry, he cleanses you from all unrighteousness if you've been converted. Okay? Now, your inheritance is kept in heaven. Watch. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. Okay. Bithynia, the elect according to the foreknowledge. Look at the word elect. To select by implication, favorite, chosen, elect. Okay, that means you were chosen. Now, let me ask you a question. Does the Bible say, I chose you, you didn't choose me, meaning the Lord? The Lord said, I chose you, you didn't choose me. I can assure you that Jonathan Clegg didn't choose the Lord. I did not choose the Lord. I was in a hotel room and a blanket of energy descended on me. And I was like, ah, what's going on? <laughs> Maybe I was having a stroke. I was like, what the heck is going on? And that was the Lord giving me a physical manifestation of his presence. And I was like, 
what the heck is going on? Jonathan, read the tags in the closure, Karen. That was my first encounter. Okay, now, he chose me. So if he chose me, am I going to lose my salvation if over the past 20 years I did some things that I didn't feel good about? No, I said, hey, I'm sorry I did this. Would you please forgive me and let's keep going. That's it. Okay, thanks for admitting it. Keep, what about David? He murdered Uriah. He he jumped in the rack with Bathsheba. He cheated on over 300 wives. So if you're married to 300 wives, you committed 300 adulteries, didn't you? Okay, well, do you think David's in hell? No. God forgave him. God even told him, I forgive you. But he said, but you're going to have consequences on this earth because, you know, you pissed a bunch of people off. And now Absalom's going to try and take the kingdom and blah, 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 blah. Anyway, doesn't mean there won't be earthly consequences, but it doesn't mean you lose your salvation. David didn't lose it. He was God's anointed. Okay, now, don't forget. So, but he admitted what he did. Now watch. The elect, according to the foreknowledge of God, the Father, like our Father who art in heaven, through the sanctification of of the spirit now see the word spirit it's capital it's holy spirit divine god christ holy spirit now watch the two become one now watch i can use these magnets to prove to you that this is the way in the bible it even says watch the redoubling of your eyes ready so there's one eye that's down one eye that's up there are they're in opposition to each other. But when I flip one, the two, the two come together and both your eyes are up. Let me let me go to the Bible and let me show you very quickly what it says in Isaiah 61 or Luke 4. Okay, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord, who what's the word for Lord? Look at the word Lord. The Lord, the self-existent eternal Jehovah. That's Jesus. And what does Jesus do? He opens wide your dungeon. Because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty. Okay, look at the word liberty. It means freedom. Okay, so to be clear, liberty, to be pure, liberty to the captives, those that were transported away into captivity. And the opening of the prison, please say this out loud, redoubled, opening of a dungeon, okay, salvation from sin, say them out loud, redoubled, opening of a dungeon, figuratively salvation from sin, and the root of the word to open the senses, especially the eyes. The self-existent eternal Jehovah that opens wide. He redoubles your eyes. It's right there in the Bible. I just broke it down. It's perfect. It's exactly what happened to me. It's a reason I turn everything upside down and show you the truth. Oh my God. Can someone take that away from you? Because you started drinking or smoking cigarettes? What? Oh my gosh. No. See, the enemy wants you to be, oh, scared. Oh, they want you scared. It's like, piss off. They want to try and scare you. It's like, piss off. The enemy's a joke, dude. So now let's go back to where we were. Hang on. Okay, now here we go, guys. Ready? First, Peter. You are the elect. You were selected. So did you choose God or did he choose you? What does the Bible say? I chose you. You didn't choose me. I did not choose him. He chose me. And he chose me to go do everything I do. My name bears witness to what I do. <laughs> okay, it's like, okay, it doesn't mean your name has to bear witness. It just means the guy talking to you was chosen. Ready? Blessed be the Lord God and Father. The Lord God and Father. So truly up the Lord God in heaven, your father, who's your mother? The earth. If you're born into a host body, 
then you have a mother that's the earth. But when you get born again, God becomes your father, your mother, your brother, everything. But if you were born in a host body, now you're part of her system. Why do you think the Bible says, come out of her, my people? Because it's her system. Mother Earth. <laughs> okay, here you go. <laughs> Blessed be God, our Father, and our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy has begotten. Everyone say this. Every say, everybody say these words. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy has begotten, say these words, us again. Say it, us again. I'm going to highlight it. A, just bright blue has begotten us again. Look at the word. To beget us again. What is it? What is the word? Ana Janacho. Look at the word Ana. Up. I told you. It's always up. Up is where our God is from. The pit is their God. Kata. The word curse is even kata. Down. Kata means down in Greek. Ana means up in Greek. Okay, now what? He has begotten us again. Ana, okay, up. And then the 1080 to procreate properly of the father, but by extension of the mother, figuratively to regenerate. So we've been regenerated again. By whom? Our father. Why do you think the Lord had me praying our father? Because father is death, being birthed into the earth, if our father is life, I'm sorry, our father is life, being birthed into the earth is death. <laughs> this is the mystery of everything, guys. Do you see how simple it is? Uh, I mean, the earth is death, host body, walking around, you die, eh, you don't get regenerated, you're done. It's that simple. But your inheritance, your eternal life, your salvation is kept for you in a vault that's guarded by him, not by you. You are not in charge of it. So quit thinking you are all these people. Oh my God, I lost my salvation. I'm like, shut up. What makes you think you? It's like, where do you come up with this stuff? No, read your Bible. <laughs> I love you guys. Come on. Okay, ready? He has begotten us again. Say it. Us again. He has birthed us again. He has begotten us again. He's procreated us up. Look, begotten us again. Anna is up. 303 is up. Anna, properly up. Jonathan Cleck, repetition, intensity, and reversal. He always says the same thing over and over. You're welcome. <laughs> there you go. He has begotten us again unto a lively hope to anticipate, ready? To anticipate, usually with pleasure, pleasure, expectation. You know why it says usually with pleasure? Because some people that are doing what they feel like they shouldn't be doing are like, ah. but that, it, guys, it doesn't take away your salvation. Like, just go admit what you've done. Say, okay, now I just keep going. You admit what you've done, and you keep going. Get your feet all cleaned up into the day and start again the next day. Just keep going, okay? There you go. He has begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Look at resurrection. Anna, stasis. See, it's from Anna, a standing up again. Anastasis, ready? From 303 up and then to stand, histamine, to stand up again. To stand up again. That's what the resurrection means. Anna, stasis, the standing up again. So, see, you've been resurrected inside your body, but you're still waiting for the second coming in the resurrection. You understand? There's a calling away. 
The video I'm doing after this is going to show you the dynamics and there's a physics. See, everything's energy, guys. And the Lord, I was at A&M for geophysics. I was in geology with physics and it was pure torture. And uh, I learned a lot about calculus, physics, and a lot of stuff that I thought there'd be no reason for me to ever use it a day in my life. But actually, he incorporated it into my ministry. So I actually know enough about biology. I know enough about physics and chemistry to understand what's going on in the world with some of these concepts that were going on in like the thing that was getting stuck in everybody's arm. When uh, I showed everybody the thing about RPTOR, RNA, Raptor, that got everybody really upset. Anyway, let's get back to this. He has begotten us again to birth up again. That's what it says. Look, up and to procreate. How do you get procreated again in Christ? You get turned up. You get turned up. Why do you think the image of the virgin is a dead sheep? You got turned up. Okay, now, I'm sorry. <laughs> you go. Unto a lively hope. By the resurrection, the standing up again. See, anastasis. A standing up again. It's from Hebrew word 430, I'm Greek word 430, which is anistomy. It's ana, and then histomy, which is to stand up. Standing up again. There it is. So when Christ was in the tomb, so he was in the tomb, there's a big boulder in front of it, a round stone, and they would roll it. Look. <laughs> so you roll the stone away. If you have a six up here and a nine down here and you roll it away, the six becomes a nine, nine becomes a six. Get it? And it rolls away. Even the dynamics of the stone moving out from the door and then out comes the king standing up again. Wow. It's built into everything, guys. Everything. Why do you think there was darkness from the sixth hour to the ninth hour? It's, it's in everything. To an inheritance. Okay, here it is. Everybody read this with me and please pay attention. This has to do with you being at peace when he comes. He's about to show up. Something's about to happen. All hell's about to break loose. We're in World War III. It's here. This is it. Okay. So here you go. Ready? And if you're here and there's World War III going on, you still don't throw yourself, oh, I didn't get to leave or something. You walk this out to the end no matter what, trusting in God for your eternal salvation because he's keeping it for you. Ready? To an inheritance incorruptible. So let's look at your inheritance. So he has borne us up again. He has begotten us again. It means to bear, to regenerate by turning you up again unto a lively hope in the resurrection, the standing on a stasis, the standing up again from the dead to an inheritance, ready? A possession, inheritance, incorruptible. That means undecaying, not corruptible, and undefiled, uh, pure and undefiled, that fadeth not away, that is unfading and is perpetual. It never fades away. And it's reserved in heaven for you. Reserved. To guard from loss or injury. Properly by keeping an eye on. It's reserved where for you? In heaven. The abode of God. Specifically the gospel Christianity. Reserved in heaven for you. See it? This is you who are kept. So who are kept to be a watcher in advance, to mount guard as a sentinel post spies at gates, to him in and protect, to keep with a garrison. Who are kept by the power of God. Through faith unto salvation. Ready to be revealed. Ready to take off the cover. To disclose. To reveal. That was my job. To reveal it to you. In the last days. What do you think the Vatican's a snake? 
<laughs> it's like it's a snake. Everyone's inside of a snake brain to a, a, a different Jesus. Do you understand? You are not in charge of your salvation once it's given to you. It's being kept for you. Now, you're going to struggle with the flesh. You're going to go, okay, I did this. I didn't do that. Should have done this. Wish I would have done that. Well, welcome to the world of good and evil. Paul even wrote about it. The very things I wish to do, I cannot. The things I wish not to do, I find myself doing. Who will save me from this body of death? Praise be to God for Jesus Christ. It's like, there you go. So be happy. I love you in Christ. I wish I could just give you the joy that God gives me. But, you know, it's like once you accept that salvation's a gift, repentance is a gift. And some people that have tasted it and turned away from it, man, they're in the worst they're in the worst way ever. That's it. But if you tasted it and you rejected it, you would know. You wouldn't be wanting to please God. You wouldn't be a liar. You wouldn't be a schemer. People that are liars and schemers and don't admit it, they're done. The people that are just trying to walk out their salvation in Christ, wanting to please God, saying, I love you. Okay, I didn't do so great yesterday. Let's go again today. That's it. Just walk it out. Okay, so... Let me give you one more scripture, okay? Just one more to try and make sure you're good. Yeah, so here you go. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him. And he cannot sin because he is born of God. So whoever is born, look at the word born. Remember, we just saw that word, to procreate. And what did it say? To to be born again is to be turned up, to be born up again. You got turned up again. So you're born again, born up. Because down is death, up is life. So you're in life and death, but when your eyes become single, it's life and life. So you're born up again. You've been procreated in Christ. So you're born again. You're born again. You have a seed in you now, a seed that, a spiritual seed that procreated you again, regenerated you again to up. You understand? Okay. You, you guys, have y'all ever seen the other chosen shirts that make a cross and has fish and it says, I was one way and it has a fish going one way. And then I became so something totally different and it has a fish going the other way and it says and the thing that happened in between was him uh-huh and you became the other way and the thing that happened in between was the resurrection inside of you okay ready now watch whoever is born of god to procreate to turn up again right can doth not commit sin to make do or abide uh, in sin for his seed, okay, something sown, that is seed, including the male sperma. His seed, it doesn't mean you have male sperm in you. Something that was sown in you, and that thing that was sown was Christ in you. Christ in you, ready? Christ in you, the hope of glory. So that seed in you remaineth. To stay, to continue, to dwell, endure, be present, abide. His seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin. So, what does it say? To be able or possible, be able, might be possible, be a power. He cannot sin. He cannot miss the mark. Because he is born of God.
So when you see people that hate each other and say all kinds of evil about people, which I have people that devote entire channels to saying evil stuff about me, and they think they know God, they're lunatics. They've lost their minds. It says it right there, whoever hated his brother has not the love of God in them. When the love of God is in you guys, you care. You want to please God. You don't want to do stuff that hurts God's heart. And if you do, you feel crappy about it. Before you got saved, did you feel crappy about the bad stuff you did? Of course not. you just like, it's normal, whatever. But when you get converted, then you're like, oh, you don't want to do anything that hurts God's heart. It makes you feel like crap. Because that seed that's in you, it's the way it works. Now, if you've got sin in your life, just admit it. Just say, I've done this. Just raise your hand. Say, I've done it. Do it. Be honest. And then be done with it. And keep going. So the end of the world's here, guys. The end of the world. This is World War Three. Nukes are about to fly. People are going to bunkers. Uh, they raise that black flag. Uh, Biden said he has his Islamic teacher come over once a week. I know that uh, Jen Psaki said, oh, uh, President uh, Obama and Oh, oops, I mean, President Biden. You know Obama's calling the shots. I showed you a long time ago who he is. Anyway, the Islamic Jihad's here. It's all of Islam's gathering together to go against Israel and the United States. China's going to jump in. Uh, Russia's going to jump in. I mean, come on. It's a no-brainer. Anyway, but I want you to be at peace. Because as the pit is rising up, and this is going to be the next video. I'm going to show you that the pit is rising and what that word rising is. I bet y'all didn't even know what the word to rise is in the Bible. You know what the word is? Allah. Uh-huh. Because Satan's going to rise out of the bottomless pit and take over the hearts and the minds of everybody. That's what's going on right now. Let me just show you one, one scripture to get you ready for the video I'm about to do. Here you go. Ready? Isaiah. How art thou fallen from heaven? How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars. Well, let me ask you a question. Where is Lucifer now? Where is he now? Well, he got a name change. He's in the pit, and he's called Satan. So... Where's Satan? He's in the pit, right? Well, he's going to send out of the bottomless pit, Revelation 17, and the beast that was and it was and was not, uh, he ascends out of the bottomless pit, right? You know what the word is? To ascend? Allah. See it? Allah. See right here? Allah. To ascend. To ascend. To arise up. To ascend up. So, Satan's in is going to ascend Allah. That's their God to ascend out of the pit. Allah. Told you. What about the little deviants commercial? Y'all remember the little deviants? The ones with the X's on their face, the X. They come from underground. Unleashing demon brothers. Let's wrap this up with a commercial real quick. Ready? Watch this. In a world that is bland, colorless and cold, where banality grows like a fungus or a mold, there lives the... I don't know why this thing's not stretching out. That's kind of weird. Huh. Let me try this again. See the X? That X energy is coming up out of the pit. 2X is, is the pit. Twin female energy. Energy. That's what starts a host body system. You ready? In a world that is bland, colorless, and cold, where banality grows like a fungus or a mold, 
Then lived the boring sheep who look just like each other. A darker force rides into town unleashing demon brothers. Here come the little deviants. They come from underground. They're rising from the depths. They're rising from the depths. Allah is the word rising. I just showed it to you in the Bible. So, in the Bible, Satan is going to rise up out of the bottomless pit. He's going to, I will arise above the stars of God by getting them trapped in host bodies and killing them. I will arise. The word is Allah. I just showed it to you in the Bible. I will arise. Allah. Watch this again. In a world that is bland, colorless, and cold, where banality grows like a fungus or a mold, there live the boring sheep who look just like each other. A darker force rides into town unleashing demon brothers. Here come the little deviants. They come from underground. They're rising from the depths to take those sheeple down. The sheeple are compliant and make for fine ingredients. For customizing anything, here come the little deviants. What kills him? What kills him? His own reflection. Because you have your own evil doppelganger. That energy is rising from underground to take those sheeple down. That's not a car commercial, guys. That's anything but a car commercial. Yeah. I better go buy a Scion. <laughs> It's like so stupid. Okay, I love you in Christ. Put your trust in God for your salvation. Not you, not what you've done, not what you've not done. That's immaterial. You you keep going. Do you understand? You keep going. Love suffers long. Welcome to the club. Okay. I love you in Christ. I'm going to give you a bear hug. Because we are the Bear Hug Cult. You can join us by buying a teddy bear online and hugging it once a day. I love you guys in Christ. See, the people that hate us, they hate us because hate lives in them. They are a place where hate lives. And they'll hate you no matter what, no matter what you do. So pray for them so you don't get tangled up in their web of hate. And carry on and leave your salvation up to him, not to you, okay? Time's coming, guys. Yes, it is. Be of good cheer. The king's coming. <laughs>